All right, here we go again. The best hidden features that I found in iPad OS 15. But first, Spike is not a hidden feature, but a pretty cool mail app that is today's video sponsor. I've tried a bunch of email apps ever since Inbox by Google shut down, and I've realized like almost every app functions the same way. What Spike does different is it sorts emails by people into a chat-like format so you can have more context and conversations just flow better. And yeah, not gonna lie, this new layout did take me a while to get used to. But once you do, it's also kinda hard to go back. Spike works with your existing account and people you contact don't have to be on Spike. There are no ads and it's completely free for personal use. I'll drop a link down below if you wanna check it out. Alright, Safari has to be by far the biggest update for me on the iPad. And yes, it's very unstable at the moment, but I really dig this new look. It just makes everything feel more expansive. But see what happens when I bring the cursor over to this tab. You get tab previews now, just like on the Mac. And of course, with this very clean look at the top, there's no way to reload the page. You have to go inside this menu or you can pull down to refresh. But if you bring over the cursor again, you'll see the button automatically appear next to the menu. Yeah, there's a lot more to Safari with the new start page, tabs, groups, and even extensions now. And I'm gonna make a whole separate video about Safari. So definitely get subscribed if you like to see that when it comes out. Okay, Files is probably the worst app right now on the iPad compared to Finder on the Mac. But now when you transfer files, you finally get a progress bar with estimated times and transfer speeds and all that. And you can now do something else while it transfers the data. Also, if you're using a mouse, you can now make selections just like you would on a regular computer. Just click and drag to select. You can also sort files by groups according to their date, size, or kind. It's still not finder level, but it's getting there slowly. Okay, also inside files, you have a much more powerful PDF editor. You can now add or remove pages inside a PDF or combine multiple PDFs together. You can even scan pages with the camera and insert them in the document. There's a new lock option if you want to password protect your file. And you get the system-wide print to PDF option in the new print menu. Yeah, that's a solid update for anyone who works with PDFs. All right, iPadOS 15 brings quite a few gaming features as well. First, you can now navigate the UI with just the controller. Like if you press and hold the PlayStation button, it'll open the games folder inside the app library. Yeah, it's getting to the point that you could just pick up your controller and start playing without ever touching the iPad. There's also a focus mode for games, so notifications won't come in while you're playing. And you can even share highlights from your game using the share button on the controller. It's kind of getting into the gaming console territory and it's so close to replacing an entire gaming setup. Let me know if you want a full gaming setup video with the iPad in the comments. Okay, back to the keyboard. The keyboard shortcuts bar that appears when you have a keyboard connected is completely redesigned and now floats over the UI. It's a little more spaced out and gives you more options but you can also minimize it to the side if it's getting in the way. And there's a whole new suite of keyboard shortcuts using the globe key that I covered in my iPad multitasking video. But yeah, you can do a lot now without touching the screen. Okay, disconnecting the keyboard, you can now access the spotlight search from anywhere by swiping down from the notification center or even the lock screen. It's also a little more powerful and you can now search inside your photos and even download and delete apps directly from here. And Instagram and all other iPhone apps now work in landscape on the iPad. Still no slide over though, but it's pretty huge if you use iPhone apps on your iPad. And speaking of iPhone, low power mode is here on the iPad. But unlike on the iPhone, it does dim your screen a bit. But I guess it's more for like that last 5%. And that's the end of my list. Let me know what's at the top of your list in the comments down below. Check out this playlist if you want more of iOS 15. And don't forget to subscribe if you like to see the public beta review. And I'll see you then.